from First Henry IV, it's in two parts, and the title that Shakespeare had before was The History of Henry IV. Um, the evidence that we have is based on it, um, the second quarto, first quarto is incomplete, and not on the folio because the folio had changes made to it. So, general plot synopsis. Okay. So, I have on the character list Mortimer. Um, Mortimer is only important because Richard II supposedly named him as the heir before he was killed. And so, um, the conflict of the play revolves around Mortimer and his um, exile, basically, in Wales right now. Um, so, on the right side of the character sheet, I have rebels against the king. And on the left side, I have the king and all of his constituents, um, his son, Prince Harry, um, and both of their companions. Um, Hotspur is important because he and um, Prince Harry, they're both Harrys, and they're in a similar situation to Bolingbroke and um, Richard II in the play Richard II, where um, Hotspur has a lot of public opinion in his favor and could be another usurper because now that um, Henry IV has usurped someone, people say, well, why does he have the right to be king? So, most important plot points are Act 1, the conflict begins. Um, this is when Hotspur and Prince Harry, who's also known as Hal, are first compared. Um, and when Hal also reveals that right now he's playing the prodigal, he's running around in taverns and carousing and acting like he won't be a good prince, so that when he actually gets coronated, he can be glorious and everyone will think, he must be a true king, it's a dazzling reformation. Um, and that's his plan. Um, and this is also when the dispute about Mortimer breaks out, where all of the rebels want him returned from Wales, and King Henry says absolutely not. So they first plan their conspiracy. Um, Act two mainly revolves around Hal and his um, companions in the taverns, and all of their schemes to rob people and then make fools of each other and do other similarly nasty things. Um, but also in this act, King Henry first receives word of the conspiracy against him and the forces they're beginning to gather. And so they're starting to get ready for war. Act three is um, when we see the rebels all together. Um, and there's this scene where they have this map of England and they say, this is how we're going to divide it up. You take this third and this third to each, and Hotspur is talking about redirecting a river and saying, no, I have every right to do that, it's good for me, and they're squabbling about it. And you're really seeing how if these people took control of England, they basically butcher it, they tear it into pieces, and in order for England to remain together, the current king has to remain in rule. Um, so then um, everyone jumps into war, Harry takes control of certain military affairs, and Act 4 is right before the battle, and this is when the rebellion begins to fall apart. Um, Northumberland, who is um, Hotspur's father, um, can't make it. He becomes ill. And Glendower can't make it for mysterious reasons, presumably because he just didn't get everything together in time. And Mortimer never shows up. He just kind of falls off the wagon there. Um, some scholars say because he just got hung up on his Welsh wife and didn't ever want to leave. And so he's just completely effeminized. Um, and um, Walter Blunt, the king's rights hand man, brings a message to the rebels that the king offers complete pardon. He will give them grace. And um, because War Worcester? Worcester. Worcester. Crazy names. Because Worcester. Um, tells Hotspur that the king is demanding battle and going straight to it, um, they charge right into the battle anyway. And so in Act 5, when Prince Harry, Prince Harry kills Hotspur in a duel and claims all of his honor for himself, and um, the royals do win the battle, and when King Henry finds out what Worcester has done, he executes him and his conspirator Vernon um, for withholding the truth and costing so many lives. Then Prince Harry has a great princely moment of grace toward a great fighter, Douglas. So.